Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today, we're actually not going to solve a particular problem. It's the part one of us proving the Wallace formula. And if you don't know what it is, it's right there on the screen to the right. Well, without further ado, why don't we just get into the question? But how do we really prove that? Well, this might seem weird, but we're starting off with an integral. It's the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the power of n. Okay, well, some of you guys watching this video might have seen this integral before, and those of you who know how to solve this, you should be thinking of integration by parts, okay? And I'm not going to use your form, which uv prime and then so on and so on. I'm going to use the more typical form, which is basically the same thing. It's the integral of u dv. This is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Okay? You see, this is kind of the same. uv prime, v u prime, basically the same thing. So, I hope that you know that formula. And just get in. Well, I'm actually going to take a sine x out of this to make it align with this. So it's still the integral from 0 to pi over 2. But then this is equal to sine to the n minus 1 x. And don't get me wrong, we are not taking the, der the derivative of sine x n minus 1 times. This is just a power. And then multiply by sine x dx. And how do we change this into d something? Well, it's basically asking us, what's the integral of sine x? Easy, right? Negative cosine. So the inside of that bracket will be negative cosine. And we can take the negative out, so it will just be negative d cosine of x. Okay? And we can take this negative all the way outside of the integral. So this is equal to negative. Okay, this is the u, this is the v. We multiply them together. And of course, don't forget it. Don't forget to evaluate it from 0 to pi over 2. So it's sine n minus 1 x times cosine of x. And then evaluate it from 0 to pi over 2. And then minus the integral from 0 to pi over 2, cosine x, d sine n minus 1 x. Okay, well, d sine n minus 1 x is super easy to calculate, right? Just take the derivative. And we need the power rule and the chain rule. So, we bring the power down, n minus 1, sine, we minus 1 from the power, n minus 2. And then multiply the chain rule, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. And of course, don't forget the dx. Okay, this is equal to negative. Well, we plug in pi over 2, this first thing is 1, the second thing is 0. So the whole thing is just 0. Minus, plug in 0, this first thing is 0 already, so it's still 0. And then minus, well, we can take this n minus 1 outside of this integral, right? And then, this sine n minus 2x will stay the same. And this cosine and this cosine can be collected to become cosine squared of x dx. Now this is equal to, well, 0 minus 0 is 0, so all we're left with is this big integral, and negative negative cancel each other out, so it just becomes positive. So this is actually just equal to n minus 1 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of this thing. And I'm going to change this cosine squared of x into 1 minus sine squared of x. And later you'll know why. Oh, 
Okay. So now this is equal to n minus one times the integral from zero to the power of two of. Let's go back here. If we open the brackets, then the first term becomes sine n minus two x, and then minus sine to the power of n x, and then of course we add the dx. Okay, well, now we can separate these two integrals. So then it's equal to n minus 1 times the first integral. Oh. And so this is equal to n minus 1 times the first. And then minus n minus 1 times the second. And I'm so sorry I forgot the dx on the first one, but I hope you can still understand that. Okay. And now I have added it back. So, well, this is a simple recurrence question. So, if we just let i n to be this original integral, then watch this. We know that this it, it's all still equal, right? So we still know that i n is equal to this thing, right? So n minus one times this is power n minus two. This is power n. So then this should be i n minus two, right? And then minus n minus one i n. Okay. Well, now we can move that there. So this is equal to this is one times i n. n minus one plus one is n. So we know n times i n is equal to this. And for the last step, we can divide n over there. So i n is equal to n minus 1 over n i n minus 2. Ta-da! Well, now we can see that we filled up the whole whiteboard. So I'll rub it out and I'll place it at the top once again. Okay. Well, now what do we do? Well... Why don't we just write i n minus 2? That's a logical thing to do. So this is equal to, we subtract 1, n minus 3, keep it, n minus 2, and then i, n minus 4. Right? But we can still keep going. i, n minus 4 will be equal to n minus 5 over n minus 4, i, n minus 6. So if we back substitute all of these, then it'll be this times this times this all the way to, well, here's the question. What do we multiply to? Well, the minimum we can multiply to is I2. But what if it's I3? So the two cases that we'll get are I3, which is equal to 2 over 3 I1. And then the last one will be I2 which is equal to 1 over 2 i0. And, well, we can kind of tell that for this one, it's pretty obvious that if n is even, then it will lead to this case. And that leaves n being odd for this case. Odd. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite i n over here. So this is equal to that n minus 1 over n multiplied by n minus 3 over n minus 2 multiplied by n minus 5 over n minus 4 multiply all the way to well there are actually two possible cases the first one is this one it leads to 
2 over 3, i1. And the second one leads to 1 over 2, i0. And again, this is even and this is odd. Okay, well now, we obviously have to figure out i1 and i0, right? But we can't use this formula because it won't make sense. But then we have to go all the way back. We know, we, I told you guys that i n was equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the power of n x, right? And now n is just 1, right? So we can just remove this n and replace it with a 1. And it'll just be sine x. The integral of sine x, super simple, negative cosine x, evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. Pi over 2, plug in here, will be 0, minus 0, cosine 0 is 1, and then, it, and then it becomes negative 1. So 0 minus bracket negative 1, which is equal to 1. And just to note, i1 is equal to all of this. So we can replace i1 with 1. And now we can figure out i0. So it's the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Sine raised to pi over 0 is 1, right? And then you evaluate x from 0 to pi over 2, and that will just be pi over 2. So i0 is equal to pi over 2. Okay, well now we can actually write it out. And why don't we do even? Well, to make some of our life easy, we don't need to write even dot dot. We can just do i of 2n. And for odd, we can do i of 2n plus 1. So we don't really need to care about writing those. And another reason why we're doing this is because look at the Wallace formula. Full of 2n's and 2n plus 1's, 2n minus 1's, they're all in terms of 2n. So, for even, or i of 2n, it will be, we just have to replace all of these single n's by 2n, okay? So, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 3, and I just won't write this term, and all the way to 1, and then the bottom will be 2n, times 2n minus 2, all the way to 2. And then, of course, don't forget the pi over 2. And if you guys are confused, this 1 over 2 is just this, okay? So we know that i of 2n is equal to, well, the top is actually the definition of a double factorial. And look, double factorials. So the top is just 2n minus 1 double factorial. And the bottom is 2n double factorial. And of course, don't forget the pi over 2. And i of 2n is equal to this. If you guys, um, I think I made this a bit unclear because I didn't put the brackets around this. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, now time to do the odd case or the i 2n plus 1 case, which is equal to well, so the top will be 2n plus 1 minus 1 is 2n. Multiply by 2n plus 1 minus 3 is 2n minus 2. And I think you can notice the pattern 2n minus 4. And then all the way to 2. And then the bottom will be 2n plus 1. 2n minus 1. And then 2n minus 3. All the way multiply to 3. Well, the top is easy, just 2 and double factorial. But 1 doesn't change anything. And we know that i 2n plus 1 will be the bottom is just basically 2n plus 1 double factorial. And the top is just 2n double factorial. And that's all. 
Okay. So this concludes the proving words formula part one, and in part two, we'll actually begin to prove and try to make the words formula. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoy my videos and you like content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.